Hello everyone. The first video I wanted to make today was a, a minor revisit of the Gaia painting. I went back and I reviewed those two videos I made the other day and was reminded of the importance of a well-performed video. I've been out of this for a long time, so I'm trying to get that mojo back as we do it. I was extremely tired when I made it and I debated taking it down and redoing it, but I decided to keep it up because I want to approach re-entering this video vlog uh, part of my life with social media, YouTube, and TikTok the same way that I approach my painting and the way that I've approached doing live performances at shows with authenticity and instinct. So there's certain details that I left out, uh, surprisingly enough, with some of the more important ones. So. Let me just show you a round two of the painting, talk about those details and move on to the next vid. This is real quick. As I said before, this is one of my favorite paintings I've ever made because it's kind of revolutionary. I tapped into a new side of the way that I work on the glass. And one of the more important details that I didn't even bring up was her hand gesture. In most Renaissance art that you see Leonardo da Vinci paint a picture of Christ, he gave him a blessing sign. Now, the interesting thing about giving that to Guy is I personified her as a human figure when she's basically just elemental in all of creation. But I did it specifically. That's the, that's the genius in the way that I designed this picture and her gesture when I was working with the model, which was to place that box with the element of time and the Nautilus shell that I created, that box, in that position that she's looking over and her hand gesture under that nautilus shell. And then you have um, this L-shaped layer of earth. You could see the layers. The other thing that I didn't mention when I uh, was talking about this piece and the other pieces that I wanted to do in this series of primordial gods and goddesses of Greek mythology was color. If you look at the, the meteors in the back, they're just uh, layers of uh, razor blade marks and brush strokes. I didn't color the ones on that layer because the made one of the one of the things about art that I absolutely love is I don't try to I don't try to force things too much and it allows me to just use my mind and my body as intuition and instinct. There's things that artists do that they cannot explain. And those are always considered the master strokes that these clowns in art therapy and art history are always trying to dissect when an artist dies and a thousand years later they're going, oh, why did he do this? He did it because he was in love. He did it because of trauma. Sometimes they just did it because it felt right. They can't explain this stuff. So when I'm dead and gone and my paintings are selling for $3 million a piece, I want this as a document to know that I just did stuff because it felt right, not because of some you know, artsy fartsy philosophical reason. There are moments where I do that. This entire piece was based on artsy fartsy philosophy. But when it comes to the act and the performance of laying down a mark, these things can't be explained. It's just channeled and unleashed. You are a vessel and a conduit for things of other realms. I made a video talking about this. Extracting artifacts. And a lot of those artifacts don't even have to be tangible. They could just simply be a motion machine of energy and execution. And that's basically how I perform the art. I try not to do too much compositionally planning. If you look at that Joker painting, a lot of that was just, it's just brush strokes and energy. But this is obviously more planned out with composition and layering and symbolism and representation. So a lot of it is instinct. A lot of it is just painting and movement and energy. And a lot of it is just, um, the combination of the two. So color, symbolism, um, instinct, I didn't touch on those and I'm kind of disappointed I didn't, but this is the best part about uh, being able to go back and do something like this. And I, I wanted to just, I wanted to put that out there as a little bit more of a, a rendered out detail of why I'm doing this. I always take on projects that uh, render me a little bit fearful to go into simply because I'm trying to learn something. I take on any kind of project, whether it's a book or a body of work, or even um, let's say this, this next book I released started as an animation. And the reason why I wanted to do it as an animation is because I wanted to start implementing the music that I make electronically into the art. It, I always take on a project that forces me to get out of my comfort zone. This did that. I'm more of a painter 
but this got me thinking more like an illustrator in a way and planning out compositions and story with shapes. I already explained that. So I just wanted to revisit that on round two on Gaia. I absolutely love this painting. I think it's amazing. I really love working with models. I think it makes the work best. And I'm I'm still trying to think of a way to, to explain that video um, in, in, a, in a good way that would get you to understand what it's like to be in my position to work with a model and have reciprocate the kind of things that I reciprocate from um, the the execution of it similar on the similar to the the painting I showed you that was the preliminary to this so um, that's about it for this one